In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the distort video effect category. So to follow along, go to working files, projects, go on down here to 1002 distorting. Let's just go on over to effects, open up video effects, put on the distort and take a look at that. Distort mainly twists things inside the image, kind of bends stuff. So we're going to take a look at some of those effects by clicking on scenic. Going over there and starting off alphabetically with Bend. It's at the top of the list there. Bend is one of the older effects that has a setup dialog box. I'm going to turn it on. And in neutral, it already bends stuff. You really need to open up the dialog box to take a look at things because you need to set the direction and the type of wave. Usually sine is what you want to accept as the default. If you go to triangle or square, it gets kind of harsh looking. Circle as well. So I always go with sine. And then direction can be left, right, in or out. See how that works. Up here, same routine. You can sort of preview it there. Take a look at the wave again. Circle, square. It's not so bad because it's coming in from the side here. Whatever you select here, you click OK, and then you can adjust those other characteristics over here. But you can't adjust this stuff over here with these properties. Once you get here, then you can make these changes here. And you can keyframe these changes and do all kinds of little distortions to your clips. Turn that off. Corner pin. Corner pin lets you drag in the corners of a clip. Let me click on that to turn it on. Once you turn it on, you can see you've got this little four-pointed thing that tells you there's a control point or some number of control points in this effect. Click Reset to get them in position. And there they are, those four targets. It lets you pull in the side of the clip. You can kind of create some perspective here if you want to, something like that. Usually what you do is you put this on top of something rather than just sitting here all by itself in space. I'm going to reset that and turn this off and go to a different clip. Let's look at this clip here. This clip has a sign in it. I'd like to replace that sign with a video, which we can do using the quarter pin. So I've got this clip over here. It looks like that. Tight shot of this rider. There we go. So I'm going to put that clip on top of the sign. Drag it over to the sign. It's going to cover the sign because it's a full frame clip. But I'm going to put the quarter pin on it, turn it on, click that. And there are the four quarter pins. I'm going to drag them in a bit to kind of get them in the general vicinity of the sign. Here you go, like that. We're going to fine tune this in a second, like so. And one more like that. Now I'm going to zoom in a bit down here in this drop down list and go to, let's say, 50%. That's a pretty decent zoom. In my setup, it'll be different for yours. Get it right there so you don't see the blue anymore. I don't want to fine tune this too much because I don't want to take up too much of your time, but you see how this works, right? Pull this guy to the corner. Get this guy over like that. We've now filled up the sign pretty much like that. Go back to fit. And let's watch this. This little animated sign along the side of the road here. Pretty high tech they got there at the dressage facility. Hmm? There we go. <laughs> Let's go back to this clip here. Turn that back on again. Let's go to lens distortion. This is kind of what you'd expect. Some lenses, when you get too close to your subject or use the wrong lens, kind of twist things around. So let's look at the setup dialog box. Here's how you can adjust things in advance, kind of get a feel for how it's going to look. But the important part of the setup dialog box is something you've seen before, and that's this little fill thing here. When you move things out of the way like that, you then get this white background or a solid color background, which you can pick here. Most times, though, you don't want a solid color background. You want to just switch it off. So you uncheck Fill Alpha Channel. And the only place you can do that in this effect is in this dialog box. Click OK. Now you're going to see the changes. And this is transparent here, but we have no clip below it. So you can't see anything other than black, which is normally what you see when there's no clip below it. Turn off Lens Distortion. Move on down to Magnify. I had some fun with Magnify. I'm going to show you how this works in a second. But here's Magnify on its own. See that little circle there on the screen? It lets you create this illusion of magnifying it like that. And there are multiple properties here in Magnify that let you do more than just create a circle like that. But I wanted to create that circle and then combine it with a graphic. So I've got this magnifying glass. I can lay that magnifying glass on top because it's transparent around the edges. And also transparent there inside the magnifying glass. So I had the motion of the magnifying glass and the size of the glass there match the size of the magnifier area and the motion of the magnifier area using keyframes. Let's watch that. Scrolls on down there as if the magnifying glass was doing this work. Pretty cool, huh? At least I think it's pretty cool. All right, let's move that out of the way. Go back to this clip again. Need to move on down the line, so I'm going to turn off magnify now. I'm going to do mirror. Mirror again has one of those little four-pointed things that tells you there's going to be some kind of a control point there. And there it is. Mirror creates this very sharp-edged mirror wherever that little control point is. I'm going to drag it in. Look at that. Really sharp-edged. 
you can create some great reflections here, like in water or something like that. But let's drag it over like this. And you can move this connection here, this mirror part around this place where the mirror lines up. Let me open this thing up so you can see that. Then you can rotate on that little target, like so. All kinds of ways to mess with mirror. Let me turn that off. Close it down, move on down the line a bit here. To offset. Offset again has that control thing. And the control thing's right there in the middle. Now offset lets you offset the entire image, the entire clip, pulling it left, right, up, or down. And wherever you pull it, the part that's off the screen shows up below here. So you can slide it left and right and have it keyframe across like that, however you want to mess with this. Rolling Shutter Repair is new to CS6, and it's geared specifically to certain kinds of digital single lens reflex cameras. Some cameras have a rolling shutter. Basically, the image rolls down the chip. So the first part of the image is recorded at one moment, and the last part of the image is recorded a little bit later. So you get this kind of streaking on it, it's a little bit of a blurring effect with some of those DSLR cameras. So depending on your camera, you'll want to use this thing to overcome that. If you have a DSLR, I'll leave it to you to check out the help file on this particular guy. Let's roll on down the line here to Sphere Eyes. Sphere Eyes is a lot like Magnify it in that it creates this round magnified area, but it kind of falls off of the edges. So it looks more like a magnifying glass as opposed to a magnified area. You can click on this little guy to grab the control point and move it around the screen like so. You can keyframe that, of course. You can keyframe the size as well. Turn that off, move on down to Transform. Now, Transform, if you compare it to Motion, up here in Motion, we've got Position, Scale, Rotation, Anchor Point, and Anti-Flicker. Going down here to Transform, you're going to see that we don't have Anti-Flicker, but we've got the rest of those guys, plus Skew. Skew lets you kind of twist the clip. So Transform basically is the motion effect with the addition of Skew and minus Anti-Flicker. So let me just turn that on. Here's the Skew part. You get to kind of twist things around. And you can decide where the Skew axis is. Kind of changes that as well. And then you can also change the other characteristics of it as you would with motion. So I'll just turn that one off. Move down the line a little bit farther. Turbulent displace is really a wild effect that can change your clip in many different ways. It really is quite amazing. There are all kinds of possibilities, different kinds of turbulence, bulge, twist. The smoother ones require a little bit more processor power, but are a little bit smoother looking. But in the end, they all look pretty darn wild. This is one of those things that you might want to play with. Evolution allows this thing to change over time. So you can make a setting here and then just evolve it over time. It's kind of cool. So you don't need to worry about keyframing these guys up here. Once you make your setting, you just evolve that over time. Move on down to Twirl. Now you've seen Twirl before, so I'm going to do something a little bit extra on it this time. I've applied some keyframes to it to have the Twirl animate across the screen and also change its size. There are the keyframes that affect the angle. That's how much twist there is. The radius, that's how big it is. And the center, that's where it's located. So let's watch how this goes across the screen. It looks kind of cool as it goes across the screen. Kind of twists up there, gets all settled down. And then now untwists. Yeah, pretty neat. Turn that guy off. Here's Wave Warp. You've seen Wave Warp before too. When you turn it on, it immediately goes to work. It's one of those effects that's on the second you apply it. It's also one that animates all by itself, even without any keyframes. Let's go back to the beginning and just watch that briefly. So it has its own little animation built in. You can have different kinds of waves, different sizes, directions, all kinds of stuff that you can keyframe here. Let me turn off Wave Warp. Now there's one other effect that I haven't told you about. Let me scroll down here and show you that one. It's called Warp Stabilizer, which is new to CS6. I'm going to devote an entire lesson to Warp Stabilizer, and that'll come up a little bit later in this chapter. So those are the distort effects. I think you're going to have a lot of fun experimenting with them.